Hi everyone, this is Thomas King, um, and today I would I would like to explain the movement of the pieces. Okay, um, so we'll start off with the rook since it's the simplest piece. Um, let's place on e4. Um, and the rook is a fairly simple piece because it moves as far as it wants um, horizontally or vertically. Um, oh, it can't take its own pieces. Uh, no pieces in chess can take their own pieces. Um, in general, it's not a desirable outcome anyway. Um, and the rook is no exception to this. Um, it's a pretty simple piece. Um, and it can't jump. So, um, uh, this king here, uh, it's safe. Because uh, the rook can't jump over this pawn. So anyway, uh, that's the that's the rook explained. God, this is that's the rook explained uh, with simplicity. Just delete these arrows. Okay. Next, we'll take a look at the king. Okay, and the king can move one square in any direction at once. So that's diagonally, um, horizontally, um, and vertically. Um, one thing about the king though is that it can't move into check. So I suppose here that white plays king e5, um, black plays knight f6. Uh, this king can't go to e6 because you can't move the king in check. Uh, the idea of the game is to make it such that your opponent um, cannot move his king in what's known as checkmate. So um, that's the king. Uh, another fairly simple piece. Uh, next we'll take a look at the bishop. And the bishop is sort of like the rook, in that it can move as far as it wants. Um, but instead of moving uh, vertically and horizontally in the case of the rook, um, the bishops move as far as they want on diagonals. Now one thing that you've probably immediately noticed is that bishops can only stay on one color square and this is just because uh, this is just to do with the nature of moving along a diagonal. Um, so yeah, that, that's the bishop. Um, like the rocket can't jump over pieces um, of either opponents or its own. Um, next we'll take a look at the queen. Which is sort of like um, the queen is okay. Pardon me. The queen is um, sort of like a combination of the rook and the bishop, and it can move as far as it wants uh, laterally, as in the case of the rook. And it can also move as far as it wants on the diagonal, um, as in the case of the bishop, which means that, as you can probably see already, the queen can control a significant amount of squares um, because it combines uh, two very powerful pieces. And just from my highlighting of the chessboard, you can see that. Um, a significant amount of it is under the influence of the queen. Um, that's just because it's such a powerful piece. I mean, look, like all the cases of these red squares that I'm forming now, they're surrounded. If you're playing Go, um, which is a, another excellent board game, 
then you would certainly not want to um, be playing red here um, because you'll be absolutely crushed uh, just by this one piece queen okay so that's a queen now we'll end with the hardest piece of all to master uh, excuse me while I just uncolor these squares um and the knight moves in what is often described as um, an L shape and I'll go over that in just a moment okay and I won't really worry about the arrows So for the purpose of demonstrating and saving already wasted time, um, we'll use red arrows. So the knight moves two squares in one, one, two squares in one direction, and one in the other. So in this case, the knight can come to f6. It can also come to d6. It can also come to c5. We're moving one square in one direction um, and two in another. I have to apologize for this graphical mess that's being displayed here. I'm sure you can see the basic idea behind the movement of the knight. Um, it's the most complicated piece and it's definitely the least intuitive. Right, that's just the basic movement of the pieces. Um, thank you for watching this video. I'll be a rather short video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, anyway, uh, if those of you, if those of you didn't know how the pieces move, uh, this is uh, how they move. Um, this isn't quite how to play a chess. I'll go over that a bit in the rest of Lesson Zero. I'm calling this Lesson Zero because it's sort of presupposed for most people who are taking the TNK64 chess course, but I want to go over it anyway so that it's compatible for all people and not just uh, strong players, or at least um, players aware of the movement of the pieces. So anyway, thank you for watching this video and see you next time.